So let's go over to what we're looking at. All right, let's go over to the euro dollar. I'm going back to the euro. So this is what's really important today with the euro dollar. Let me make an adjustment here for me. Okay. So this right here is the reactionary area for the for the euro. So the 11050, we knew that that was really, really big resistance. Um, you know, like live market alerts right here. The euro dollar 11050 is where a lot of traders will look to be long. So any dip below 111 may be very well supported. Okay. It's what I wrote last night. Um, oh, are you guys, sorry, here we go. All right, better. All right, so what I wrote last night is the euro dollar 11050 is where a lot of traders will look to be long. So any dip below 111 may be very well supported. Uh, our low overnight was 11063, you know, the comments that came, came out from, um, from uh, the, one of the Greek officials um, saying that you know they, they they might not make the June fifth payment. Um, now the euro dollar dipped to one ten sixty, and when I got up this morning, I realized, man, I wish I was around to pick up the euro dollar at those levels. I just wasn't. I I wasn't able to. You know, I I wasn't around. I was sleeping, so I didn't. I missed that, but. This is good. This is the make it or break it point for the euro dollar. If we close below 110.50, it's going to be very problematic for dollar um, for dollar um, uh, uh, bears. Okay, because we if we if we we crack the 110.50, we're probably going back to the 107 108 area. I would say this is a pretty realistic expectation over the course of the next. You know, a couple of days, all right? You guys, uh, you guys can see the charts now, right? You guys can all see that. Okay, all right. Okay, good. All right. So this is massive support today. One ten fifty. Asterisk. Very, very big support. So now the question is, well, where is resistance? You know, where, where are we going to, um, you know, what will turn? The euro dollar higher, okay. To me, it's a pretty easy uh, view. Um, you know, this is support, which, if we can bounce and close the day above 112, we should probably revisit the 114, 115, or maybe even higher, okay. Um, but 112 is going to be pretty key because what that will do, if you imagine this by the end of the day. If we get up towards 112, this will be a hammer. So that means we'll have really good follow through going over the next couple of days. All right, so um, 112 is resistance. Today's high, the, the high today is 111.50, which would get really the bulls going. So I'm gonna put in 111.50, okay? Right now we are in a range environment. Okay, let's go over to the cable. Now the pound, as you guys can see here, obviously there's there's the sell area. Yesterday, If you're a wise trade customer, you knew that this was the bull bear line. This is the bull bear line. It is also the 50% retracement, and that came in at 154.50. Okay. Huge support at 154.50 for the pound dollar. Okay. This is the bull bear line. What that suggests to me is. As long as the pound is above this blue line, it is not bearish. It's bullish. Okay. We drop below this blue line and we are at risk for the pound turning lower. Right? It's also you can see a big, big resistance here. 
support here. It's a 50% retracement there. Do you see it? As long as we're above 154.50, it is bullish. 154.50, massive support. Now you could you could actually argue today, just to get a little head start on this, if for some reason the pound breaks below 154.70, you know, again the the. And that could actually happen ahead of the FOMC statement or minutes, excuse me. Um, you drop below that 154.70 and, you know, you, you can expose some downside. But this right here, this 154.70, that, that's probably your first indication that, you know, the cable's about ready to roll over. Okay. Now, notice previous support, current resistance. Now the MPC meeting minutes, they came in, uh, or MPC meeting votes, they came in um, in, uh, in line as expected. So there's no real surprises there. Uh, I think the pound probably just rallied a little bit on a relief. That was more of a relief rally. But that's 155.60 is resistance. And a break above that will uh, will will reassert the 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 bullish trend, okay? If we can get above there, so for the pound, per, this the analysis this morning I think is really easy. It's pivotal for very, you know, for a lot of these currencies. But as you can see, it's really, um, you know, pretty clean, pretty clear. Let me delete that, okay? All right, let's go. Uh, Lorraine says the bias chart is too small. You know what? Uh, let me see if I can do this. Uh, uh, how's that? How's that? How's that? Okay, is that better? There you go. That'll be better for you. You guys think it's too small. Give me the too small crap. Here, take that. There. 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 Now stick it. Here you go. Can you guys read it? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> now I'm being a jerk. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, let's... Let's go over to, um, where are we going? Oh, the Swissy. Let's go to the Swissy. By the way, um, Swissy, surprisingly, broke higher too, even as the news out of Greece uh, came out today, or that, those comments out of Greece. Let me get rid of this. Delete that. We're going to delete some of these lines. We don't need them right now. Um, so let's figure out some fib levels here. Fifty percent retracement of that last move lower. Um, this is an hourly chart. Check this out. See that? Don't trust it. Don't trust it. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, tough trading right into that resistance as relative strength is diverging like that. Um, but if the dollar rallies, we have a confluence here 
at 94.70, you have 94.65 as a 50%, 94.70 is a 618. You have previous support from way the hell over here. You can see it way over here, right? See that? So really, let me go over to the four hour. Okay, if we continue to rally, that's going to be some major resistance here. 94.70. I'll write that down. I, I just don't, I, I really don't see us we're going to get there, but um, 94.70. Support. That's going to be some pretty strong support down here at 93. Really strong support. I, I don't know. I, again, and the Swiss is one of those wild cards too. I you don't. It, it's tough to trade, especially with what's happening in Greece. You know. Okay. Um, Let's go over to Okay, let's go over to the yen. So here's the yen. So uh, like I said, I shorted the yen yesterday. I shorted it at like I don't know. I think I shorted at what 30 No. 38 40 shorted around four and I got out at like 70 so I, I you know I took like a 30 pip loss in it yesterday um, I um I'm not convinced I'm, I'm not convinced about the end I mean let's delete everything I'm really not uh, you know we we are in a wedge um, I guess that's one way we can look at it. Okay. So, you know, looks like we're breaking higher here out of this, you know, triangle. You can see there. All right. Which you know, suggest that maybe it maybe a move to 122 is you know not out of the question. But this a move like this could be you know viewed as a you know just a, a minimum move out of the wedge. Okay, so question is you know once we get there, do we actually turn lower? You know, I don't know, but. Because you know, yesterday I shorted the ASEAN and I closed it out basically for break even. Um, I think I made I made like three pips, but you know, after commissions, I think it was probably about break even. Um, yeah, I'm just not I'm not really convinced here about the end, especially with the equities. Equities equities have been rallying for so long, and the 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 yen the dollar the the yen pairs well the dollar yen hasn't moved up at all. Um, so, okay, so of this last move, From the high to the low, the 786 coincides with the spike high here at uh, 121.25. I'm 
We'll mark that down as resistance today. Oops. Okay, now support. So if you imagine this is up, and and I and I I was just kind of yeah, estimating this move. It, it's, it's more like that. Um, okay. Uh, the fact of the matter is we're holding on to our gains too. Um, you know, any move back down here to 120.50 is probably going to be supported pretty well, at least for the day. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the Canadian. So. Yeah, I'm I'm out of my Canadian. I got out of the, my entire position, and um, I really wouldn't mind playing the dollar Canadian back to the long side, especially if the dollar, um, you know, especially if the dollar strengthens today, and especially if crude oil breaks below 58 bucks. I mean, that's going to be that's that's going to be the you know. How I'd like to play it. However, it's very choppy in here. We're not too far off of you know the the range range resistance, if you will. Now let's get rid of that. That's old. Let's get rid of that. I mean, we should be supported here pretty soon. But this will probably be better support. See down here, like this. One twenty one sixty. Um, you know, uh, Scott made some comments and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to comment, I'm going to read his comments because the, there's a reason why I didn't do this before. And this is the reason why, but, um, hold on, let me write down this number, 121.60. One twenty one sixty is support. Hold on. Uh, resistance today would be up at one twenty three. We have one twenty two fifty. Obviously, it's holding us up right here. Um, let's get rid of these Fib levels real quick. We don't need those for right now. Oh, oh, 122.70, okay, I'm going to write that down, 122.70, that's a 38% retracement of the high to the low, yeah, okay, 122.70. So Scott writes in, uh, he goes, hey, uh, changing to monitor makes your screen larger, but trying to read the numbers on your charts, even with glasses on and a magnifying glass on my laptop, very difficult. To watch on an iPad or iPhone must be really hard. Um, listening only time. And, you know, that, that's a good point. If, the, if you're looking at this screen on a, on a, you know, on a small monitor, um, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So, 
Kelly says on an iPad or an iPhone, you can pinch the screen to zoom. Uh, that's true. That's, a, that's also a good point. Um, I, I don't. I don't know if I'm going to stick with these settings for the screen settings. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I think I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll. I'll do it for you know this morning, and we might go back to the the the, the old way because it's. It's. I know it's more difficult for if you're on a smaller screen, and that's the reason why I didn't do it the, in the first place. But anyway, um, so uh, KJ says I always watch on iPad, and this is great. And Eric says I'm using my Samsung S5, and I can see clearly. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, just. Food for thought. I I, uh, I haven't made a decision one way or the other, but um, Miguel says I'm watching an iPad and it looks great. Okay. All right. Well, in the meantime, and, and I'm willing to take comments. So uh, let's, I'm going to put you on hold for just a few minutes. Okay. And when I come back, we will, uh, we'll continue on with the Kiwi, the Aussie, the dollar index. And um, hold on. Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah. We have, um, wholesale sales, Canadian wholesale sales to deal with. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the uh, Morning Edge webinar. I just want to let you know the dollar Canadian and the dollar peso are actually both um, at their lows of the session. So we were just trading there at lows. Um, and um, we're seeing, you know, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a uh, uh, dollar weakness just come through the market. We've got the euro bouncing back towards the 111.20. The cable is not too far off of its highs at 155.35 right now, and um, you know the the the, uh, the dollar is seeing a little bit of weakness. So just a just a little heads up. Not nothing to get excited about. And like I said, I'm I'm not doing anything uh, at the moment, but we are seeing some dollar uh, weakness come through the market just a bit. All right, uh, let's go back over to the charts and I want to quickly take you over to the New Zealand and um, the, uh, the the Aussie dollar. So the New Zealand dollar, this is um, this currency pair right now is on my hit list. This is the this is the one currency right now that I'm not short and I really want to be short, okay? No, I'm still short the Kiwi via the Aussie New Zealand and the pound New Zealand, but the New Zealand dollar, you can see we're right on the cusp of, um, of, uh, of, of breaking lower and, and a break below basically 73 cents is going to expose a pretty aggressive down move in my opinion. Okay. Uh, it's been a lot of people trying to buy the Kiwi, um, you know, bargain, bargain hunting, uh, if you will, but overall, you know, the Kiwi looks like it's ready to roll over again, and it's ready to resume its longer term downtrend. Uh, I'm a real, like I said, I'm a big fan of shorting the Kiwi itself. I'm just not short the New Zealand yet. If we see dollar strength come through the market, this is, this will be the first pair that I actually short. Okay. So if we break below 73 cents, that's, uh, my opinion, we'll see. Uh, we'll see 71 and probably sub 70 again. All right. I, I believe the RBNZ is going to start cutting rates, uh, and so it's this is just it'll be just the beginning of the Kiwi. All right. Now resistance, though, uh, what's going to take the downside pressure off the New Zealand at this point? Uh, well. You know, if we get some dollar weakness, like the euro starts to spike and, you know, the cable and whatnot, if we get above, oh, yeah, this is easy to see, very easy to see. Okay. So above 73.70 would create a squeeze, okay? Below 73, it's in trouble. So 73.70, that is resistance. 
By the way, that is key support. 7370, that would take off the downside pressure and we are in a range. We're in a range here too. Uh, let's go over to the Aussie. So the Aussie, uh, I shorted it yesterday. I made, made a little bit of money. I mean, I mean, I like I said, I I lost a little in the dollar yen, and I made a little in the Aussie dollar. They basically flatted out each other, but shorted it as we passed through this trend line. Um, and this is another. This is one of those other currencies that, you know, if we see some dollar weakness or Sorry, I mean, if we see some dollar strength, I'm going to really look to short the Aussie dollar as well. See, this is really critical support that comes through here. And um, this is a real, you can see just how clear, like relative strength, for example, is a four hour chart. Where's my drawing tool? Um, notice how we went higher in price. See how relative strength did not, okay? Just led to that, you know, obviously steep sell-off that we have now. Spike low, spike high. 38% retracement. That's your 50% retracement right there. Let's get rid of this. Seventy-eight, sixty-five. That's support. Okay. Um, resistance right now is a retest of this trend line. So that would be back at. Um, 79.60 or so. You can see the this hourly low too, right through here. So let me, oops, grab that red line here. Let's move that over here. So any move back up to 79.60, probably going to find some sellers. Okay, we're in a range. All right, so now let's go over to the dollar index. Okay, so the dollar index, uh, as you guys can see, this is a uh, very, very key, and uh, I'm gonna go into the four hour chart here. Very, very key resistance is uh, this trend line, so let's do What is today's high? Ninety five eighty three. Yeah, um, then you have that spike high here. Then you have that resistance right here, which is this. Get rid of this really quick. Okay. We don't have to deal with that right now. So right now it's really, um, 95.85 is resistance. 
95.85 is resistance. Let's figure out where support is. So where is support? So where would we go? Man, dollars toast, you know, when would that come out of my mouth? It's really hard to say. I mean, you can see like this flag pattern here, it's played out perfectly, right? Uh, that flag pattern played out perfectly. Duh, duh. So that's over with. So that means that this level should offer really good support. So if we break below, let's just call it 95. I mean, 95.05, that would be a problem. So 95.05, and we are still in a range. Okay. All right. So this is our uh, bias chart for now. Okay. Again, I'm I'm not I'm not convinced about um, I'm not I'm not convinced about the dollar one direction or the other right now. Um, I'm not convinced one one direction or the other, uh, but I'm looking for clues today, and I think today is the the make it or break it for the dollar. Okay, whether well, the dollar is going to continue to rally or it's going to you know or or we're going to see a reversal. I think we had a key we have we have a key and we're at a key inflection point today. All right. With that being said, I'm going to take some questions. I'm going to go to the way back. Um,